His mercy, His kindness, His love. This evening, we just want to thank God. So together, as we hear God's word, let's pray that the Holy Spirit will take control of our service today. In the name of Jesus. Father, once again, we want to thank you. Once again, we want to bless you. We want to adore you. We want to magnify you and lift you high above every king. Be thou exalted. Be thou lifted up. Be thou praised. And be thou worship. Thank you because you are faithful. Give you all the glory. Give you all the praise. Give you all the worship. Let the words of our mouth the meditation of our heart be accepted before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank all of you for coming. We also want to thank our online people, online service people. We are happy that you are with us. And this evening, we want to give Jesus all the glory, praise, and honor for what he's doing. You know, God is doing a great thing. This is a wisdom word. And we thank God that once again, we are in his presence. By which we can manifest his greatness and his power. Today, we just want to give Jesus all the glory, praise, and honor as he has brought us into his presence. Hallelujah. This is a wisdom word, and just as we always say, wisdom is the principal thing. Oh, praise God. Wisdom is the principal thing. According to the book of Proverbs chapter 4, if we look at Proverbs chapter 4, Bible says some interesting things. Let's look at it. Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 7. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, take your Bible and let's go through. Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 7. Bible says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And you know all you're getting. Get understanding. Number 5 says, exalt her. And she will promote you. She will bring you honor. When you embrace her, she will praise on you, on your head, an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. So wisdom is the principal thing. That's why we take it upon ourselves to learn wisdom. This is our wisdom word. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 1, Proverbs 1, verse number, verse number 7. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, of course, wisdom. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. So we are giving you the basic, the reason why we are undertaking the subject of wisdom and we're dealing with wisdom all week, every week as we meet here. Because wisdom is the principal thing. I want you to know that the scribes and the Pharisees, they ask the question, what kind of wisdom is given to him? They were talking about Jesus. The great and mighty things are wrought in his hands. That tells me that Wisdom is power. Wisdom is power. And wisdom is dominion. Wisdom can heal. Wisdom can restore. Wisdom can cause great things to happen. Therefore, we need to look at the word wisdom. You know, for us to be able to walk in it and be successful. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is supreme. Wisdom is the greatest. And the Bible wants us to look at it very, very carefully. We need to seek wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
we need to come to a place where we fear the Lord. And James said, if you lack wisdom, you should ask God. Isn't it not interesting that James is telling us that if you and I lack wisdom, we should ask the Lord. So, you don't have to sit down. You just have to ask the Lord to grace you with his wisdom. Wisdom, James said, we should ask the Lord if you lack it. Because if you don't have wisdom, you will not be able to go far in the things of God. So wisdom is what you need. And James said, we should ask God for it. For he gives it to us liberally. And he doesn't, he doesn't hold it back. Oh, glory to God. So today, we're going to be looking at wisdom. We're going to be studying wisdom. And we're going to be looking at the book of Daniel with respect to the wisdom that we are going to be teaching. You know, we are here to let you know that in the days of Daniel, when he spoke, people listened. Not only ordinary people, but people in higher authority, they listen. Why will they listen to Daniel? That's a question that you have to ask yourself. Why were they listening to him? Because he spoke wisdom. This is the reason why you and I have to ask the Lord to give us wisdom. When Solomon was enthroned as the king of Israel, he asked God for one thing. He didn't ask God for money. He didn't ask God for fame. He didn't ask God for power. He just asked God for wisdom to rule. As a matter of fact, he asked the best thing. Because wisdom is power. Wisdom, according to Proverbs chapter 4, 8, he said he will do put on you an ornament of grace and favor. So wisdom, as a matter of fact, Solomon asked for the greatest. Because out of wisdom, he will get money. Out of wisdom, he will be famous. Out of wisdom, he got to be powerful. So this is the reason why wisdom is so important. Wisdom is so important. So this evening, this afternoon, tonight, based on where you are watching or where you are, we want you to ask the question, when you speak, will people listen to you? Will people take notice? Will people see that you are speaking out of wisdom? That's why we're taking our time to study wisdom word. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, by wisdom, Daniel, this great man of God, people listen to him because by wisdom, he had great relationship. He built relationship by wisdom. Wisdom allowed him to build relationship, beloved. When you build good relationship with people, when you talk or when you speak, they will listen to you because you have relationship with him. Friends, the reason why many are not listening to you is because you have not built, over the years, you've not built relationship. Relationship. So the number one thing that we are looking at in respect to walking in wisdom, allowing God to use you is to build relationship by the wisdom that God has given to you. You need to build relationship. Daniel, in a lot of time that he spent when he was taken captive to Babylon, built relationship. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will begin to build the relationship build relationship, good relationship with people so that when they, you speak, they will understand that you are speaking of their interests. You are not there to destroy them. You're speaking for their interests. People listen to us because of who we, we know. People will listen to you because you have built a relationship with them. Daniel, 
had a reputation for knowing the God of Israel. He built a relationship with God. And therefore, he had a reputation. My question to you is that do you have a relationship with God? Have you built a relationship with God? Have you built a relationship with God? Why? Because when you speak the word of the Lord, and you speak because you know God, you speak wisdom. Every word that will come out of your mouth will be a word of wisdom. Hear me clearly, beloved. You need to have a relationship with God. Because God will impart in you his mind, the mind of God, the mind of Christ will be your mind. Therefore, when you speak, it will be full of wisdom. Glory to God. When you speak, it will be full of wisdom. So this is the reason why Daniel, when he spoke, people listened. Because he spoke out of the throne room. He spoke because God was with him. He spoke because he had a relationship with God. Therefore, God was giving him everything that he needed to say to the people. So the people listened. Are people listening to you? That's a question you need to ask yourself. This evening as we go through wisdom word, my prayer for you and my prayer for me is that people will begin to listen to us because we're speaking the words of wisdom. Glory to the Lamb of God. Friends, in Babylon, Daniel had great opportunities and reputations because he had a relationship built over the years with his God. And that's why Jesus Christ wants you and I to come to him and have a relationship with him. You need to have a relationship with Jesus you need to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit so that every word that will come out of your mouth will be ordained by him. Let me have your loudest amen. Amen. So, when, when you want people to listen to you, you need to sacrifice. You need to lay down your life. People who are listening to people who are so humble. They don't want to listen to an arrogant person. And for this matter, Daniel was so humble. He was a man who had sacrificed everything. Remember when they went to Babylon with the three Hebrew boys, they decided not to mingle themselves with the food of the king. They let go everything to eat just herbs. To signify their commitment to the king of kings and the lord of law. So they sacrifice. Anyone who sacrifices or puts his life on the line for Jesus will always operate on a supernatural level of wisdom. Because this God will always will always be in him. Do you know that when you sacrifice, you sacrifice your own life. You put your own life aside. When you sacrifice, you put things that you can do naturally aside to be able to do the will of the Father. Jesus said, and he said one special thing. He said, in the volume of the book, it is written of me. I came to do the will of the Father. So sacrifice is so important. Do you sacrifice? Have you sacrificed? Have you sacrificed for something so dear to you? People listen to you because of what we have suffered. Daniel sacrificed and suffered. Remember, he was put in the, in the lion's den. And then he came out of it. Don't you think that when he, he spoke at that time, people will listen? When he was in the lion's den, the king, early in the morning, the Bible says the king 
rose up and early to go see this man called Daniel. Why? Because he put everything on the line for God. He put everything on the line for God. His life was on the line. He sacrificed. So when he came out of it, the king himself made a decree. He made a law that this God of Daniel, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they put their love on the line in the furnace fire, heated seven times. So, the beloved, we are looking at the wisdom word. And wisdom tells us that we need to put our life on the line for God. For in the book of Hebrews 6, 18, I quote it most of the time, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, that we may have some consolation. So God will not lie. And so when we put our life on the line for God, he will, he will come true, beloved Wherever you are, you need to put your life on the line for God. You need to stand on his promises which will never fail. You need to understand that God's word is supreme. You need to understand that as water comes down from heaven or rain, it comes to fertilize the land and cause the seed to grow. And by wisdom, we know that all things is made by this God. So, beloved, you need to put your love on the line. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Sometimes we can't even sacrifice for God nor for other people. We need to sacrifice. Daniel gave up his life, right to eat the king's food. He gave us his right to eat the king's food. He let everything go. He put on a huge sacrifice. That's wisdom. That's the reason why when he spoke, people listened. Because he's a man of his word. He's a man of integrity. He's a man that you can depend on. He made huge sacrifice for God. I want to stress this point. That Jesus sacrificed for you and I. He put down a huge sacrifice and he wants us to also do the same. If Jesus did that sacrifice for us, what are you doing in turn? Oh, beloved, he sacrificed everything for you and you can't do a little for him. Wisdom tells you that we need to also let go of ourselves. We are too much of ourselves. That's why nothing happens. We are too much of ourselves. We love ourselves more than we love God. And therefore, we can't put our lives on the line for God. Some people even can't rise up and go to church. Beloved, Daniel, when he spoke, people listened. Kings listened. People in authority listened. Why? Ask the question, why? He was a slave. He was a refugee. He was a slave taken to Babylon. But when he spoke, the king will listen. The magicians will listen. Everyone will listen to why he operated on a higher level of wisdom. He operated in that wisdom. He was wise. And you also, you are wise. As you sit down in your chair, at home, in the church, wherever you are right now, you are wise because you know Jesus. And Jesus is our wisdom. And because Jesus is your wisdom, you carry the same wisdom inside of you. Only you need to put it in operation. Only you need to put it at work. You need to operate on the higher level of wisdom that Jesus operated. Because the Bible says the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of you, you and I. And if that spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of you, that same spirit, the Bible says that same spirit, Hebrew, sorry, 
Romans chapter 8, verse number 11. That same spirit, that same spirit will quicken or fortify or mortify your mortal bodies. So, Jesus is our wisdom. And because Jesus is our wisdom, we carry supernatural wisdom. We operate on that higher level of wisdom. So let's live by it. Let's live in wisdom. Let's operate in wisdom. Let the wisdom of God operate in us. The word of God is God's divine wisdom. Whatever we operate in, according to the word of God, is the wisdom of God. It's the wisdom. Wisdom is so important, beloved. Wisdom is so important. As a leader in the church, as a man of God, a woman of God, a deacon, a deaconess, a church member, when you speak, will people hear you? When you speak, will people hear? Will people listen to your speech? You need to speak like you, you season your, your speech. You, you, you speak like the oracles of God. Friends, as we look into the life of Daniel, Daniel was somebody who was ast astonishing. When we look at Daniel chapter 5, verse number 13 and 14, Daniel 5, 13 and 14, hallelujah, the book of Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5, 13 and 14. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, are you that Daniel who is one of the captives from Judah, whom my father, the king, brought from his, his Judah. Look at this. It says, I've heard of you that the spirit of God is in you and that, and that light and, and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Look at the description. He said, I have even heard of thee. That the spirit of God is in you. Friends, the spirit of God is in us. You and I. So we also have a high level of wisdom. An excellent wisdom. We need to operate in this excellent wisdom. That same spirit, wherever you are, is the same spirit. Wherever you are, beloved, is the same spirit. Is the same spirit that was in Daniel that is in you right now by the spirit of God. By the spirit of God, you have that same spirit. Excellence wisdom is found in thee. What, 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 what a, a speech. What a congratulations that was given to Daniel. That there was an excellent spirit found in him. But as you sit down here today, as you sit in your home, you have that same excellent spirit. That same excellent spirit now, which was in Daniel, is of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that same spirit is in you. And you cannot pray it on a higher level of wisdom. Oh, beloved, it is there you can operate in it. All you need to do is to ask God for a higher level of your wisdom. The Bible says, Daniel, he spoke and people listened. By wisdom, he had a very good character. 
He had a very good character. Friends, character is the most important thing in our walk with God and even in this world. Your character will determine the level that you go. Your character will determine the position that you occupy. Your character will depend will depend and determine how far you can go in society and in, in God. Your character. People listen to you because of your character. Beloved, by wisdom, we need to build a reputable character. We need to build a character that when we speak, people will listen. As leaders, your character is so important. Your character is you. When we say you, it is your character. It is your behavior. It is what you do. Your character is you. So people will listen to you. The reason why people probably are not listening to you because of your character. Because of what comes out of your mouth. Because of what comes out of you. Because of the way you do things. Your character is not at the same level of your Christian Christianity. Your character and your Christian Christianity is totally different. Your character is so important. Daniel had that character. That's why kings were going to him. That's why people of authority were going to him. His character was good. He spoke. He spoke very well. He uttered his word according to how he should utter. He spoke by wisdom. Glory to God. He spoke by wisdom. He has an excellent spirit. His character was beyond, beyond, beyond all that people want to see. People listen to us because of our integrity, our character. Daniel remained blameless and trustworthy even when he had to rebuke kings. He rebuked kings because the, the kings took his word because of who he was. It doesn't matter how old and how young you are. Your character will determine the level that you can reach. Your wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom tells you that you cannot behave anyhow. Wisdom tells you that you cannot do things that are not right. Wisdom tells you that you have to behave in a certain way. Wisdom tells you that you have to talk at a certain way. Wisdom tells you that you have to do things accordingly, according as the word of God is. You cannot do things contrary to what God's word says and uh, and think that you are walking in wisdom. No, you are not. You are walking in the things of this world. There are two types of wisdom. Probably you are walking in that type of wisdom which is sensual and demonic. According to the book of James. There are two types of wisdom. The wisdom that is first peaceable and easily entreated, forgiving, oh, loving. That kind of wisdom is that we're talking about. And your character will define you. Either you are walking in God's wisdom or you're walking in the wisdom of the world. So your character, this evening, your character is so important in the walk with God. I challenge you, I challenge you this evening. I challenge you. You may have some talent. You may have some abilities. You may have talent that when you put forth, people will look at you and, and say great things about you. But then when they come to your character, and your character stinks, everything that you have done will be shamelessly shameless. 
Nobody will recognize, oh, the guy who can sing beautiful, but he has a very unusual character. That guy can do great things, but his character is not good. Beloved, that should not be spoken concerning you. Your character must define your talent. Your talent can take you so high, but your character will bring you so low. Your talent, your talent, your giftings, your abilities can raise you high, but your character will automatically bring you low. That's how it is. And this is the reason why Daniel, Daniel had a good character. Daniel built his character on the word of God. Daniel built his character by the, by the power of of the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of him. He didn't have a character that was questionable. His character was not questionable. His character was excellent. That's why he had an excellent spirit. That's why he has excellent wisdom. His character is amazing. But you have the same wisdom because you have Christ. The Christ is the apogee of wisdom. He's the pedestal of wisdom. It's not, it's not Daniel. Daniel was not. It's not God. Daniel is not Jesus. He just, he just obeyed the king. Obeyed the Lord God Almighty. And received that same grace. You can also obey God and receive that same grace. Oh, you can receive that same grace just as Daniel received. Daniel was a man. And he received grace upon grace. And he operated on a high level of wisdom because of the grace that God gave him. Oh, beloved, you can also be the same. This afternoon, this evening, God is speaking to you. You cannot go on the same way that you've been doing. You cannot approach things the same way you've been approaching. It's been backfiring on you. People are looking down on you. People are disdaining you because of the way you speak. Why don't you speak with grace? Why don't you speak with season? Like so. Why don't you speak? Why don't you have a tender love? These are all wisdom. The word of the Lord can change the way you do things. Wisdom is so important. We are looking at wisdom word that will change your life forever. Wisdom. Your character is so important. Your abilities, your gifting. There are so, so many people who are so much gifted. Gifted. But they, they can't go far. Because they have not built a godly character. They have not built a character based on the wisdom that God has given to them. So, initially, you, you may see them going too far. But then you see them retrogressing because of their character. I charge you today, build a God-given character. I charge you today, God's word will build a formidable character, a strong and excellent character, a character based on the wisdom of God, a character based on the word of God. A character that is unchangeable. You cannot change it. On, it cannot be stopped. Stop. You are unstoppable because of the excellent wisdom that you occupy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Now, Daniel had Relevance. People listen to us because we identify with their needs. Daniel was relevant. Daniel was relevant. And he was important to people. When we talk about Daniel, he was so important to people. So when he spoke, people listened to. People listened to him when he spoke. People will listen to you because you become relevant to them. You become so important to them.
By wisdom, when you take care of the needs of people, when you respect people, when you care for people, friends, that's the only way that you become relevant. People will listen to you. People will listen to you when you speak. This is wisdom, beloved, that you care. Jesus said, care for the needy. Care for the needy. So when we care for people, when we stand in for people, when we, we go a long way with people, why would they not listen to you? By your wisdom. When you do what God's word says you do, people will listen to you. You become relevant to them. You become very important to them. People will listen to you and I because we identify with their needs. You identify with the needs of people. You identify with their needs. You sympathize with them. You cry with them. You enjoy with them. You know, you praise them. You do all things to make sure that they are made happy. They are happy people. And that's how it is. Friends, I speak to you from the altar of grace. The altar of power. Every one of us, we need to learn and learn that we need to identify with people and their needs. By caring, by helping, by doing what is right. You know, that's so important. You become relevant to their needs. Daniel lived with the Babylonians and identified with their struggles and lifestyle. He identified with them. That's why he was the king of the eunuchs. He ruled. Oh, he was the chief, chief eunuch. You know, he was made one of the, one of a great person in the land of Babylon, because he just did not go there and distinct himself from people. He identified with their need. He helped them. He counseled them. Will you do that? When you do that by wisdom, people will listen to you. And do you know when people listen to you, you can tell them the word of God. You can bring the word of God to them and they will listen and say, because it is coming from this woman, because it is coming from this man, I believe. Because this man, this woman is a man that is trustworthy. He's a man of character. He's a man that can identify with me. He's a man that has sacrificed a lot for me. He's a man that has built a relationship with God and with me. So I can listen to him because the words that is coming out of this man is the words of God. It's the words of encouragement. It's the words of strength. That's why they will listen. It is wisdom. Glory to God. It's wisdom. It's wisdom. It's wisdom. Wisdom will tell us to have insight. People listen to us because of what we know. If you don't know, how can they listen? And this is the reason why it's so important that we learn. We learn so that we can be of a good help to people. Your insight will allow people to, to listen. Your insight, the things that you know, the God that you know. Do you know God? Do you? The question is, do you know God? Can you can you, can, you, can you talk about God? Can you inspire people about God? Can you tell people that Jesus is Lord? Can you? Do you know Jesus? Do you have a relationship with him? Can you talk about him? Can you explain things about Jesus to people? Are you able to give people the, the word that they need when they come to you? Are you? That's the question. Do you have more insight into the realm of the spirit? Do you have insight into the things of God? Do you have insight? If you don't have insight, you cannot speak to people. And even when you speak, they will not listen because you don't have the insight that they need at that particular time. But you need to know this God. You know what Daniel said? 
Daniel 11, 32. He said, the people that know their God, do you know your God? Daniel 11, 32. So the people who know their God shall work strong and they shall do exploit. The people who know their God shall work strong and do exploit. Glory to God. Do you know God? Or you just know God by, by, by what somebody said the last time you, you listened? No. Relationship, why do you know him? Have you, have you sacrificed? Have you built a character of God over the years? Do you have, or have you become relevant to people? Uh, friends, do you have insight about what the people need? What people need do you have in you? Do you have what it takes to help people who need what they need? Insight is so important. People will listen to us because of what we know. Daniel could interpret dreams and visions and, conf and confuse everyone else. He can interpret dreams. You know, can you tell somebody the mind of Christ? If somebody came to you for counsel, what are you going to say? Oh, I don't know. I have to go to the pastor. I go to the elder to get information for you. No. When somebody came to you and needed attention concerning some things, do you have the insight? Do you have the understanding power? Do you have the knowledge to give to that person? That's how people will listen to you. Wisdom tells you that you need insight. You need to learn. You need to acquaint yourself with God so that you'll be able to know the mind of Christ. The Bible says, who has the mind of Christ that he might instruct him? But the Bible also says, we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind. Do you have the mind of Christ? So that you can instruct people as they come to you. That is wisdom. Do you have the mind of Christ? Do you have the mind of Christ? If you don't have the mind of Christ, you can have it. You can have it. The mind of Christ is his word. That is his mind for you and I. We have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Beloved, people will listen to you because you are genuinely transparent. Are you transparent or you are falsehood? Are you trying to be like a chameleon? Do you change here and there? People will listen to us. Wisdom tells us that we need to be transparent. We need to be transparent. We need to be transparent. Genuinely transparent. Daniel's life was an open book. Is your life an open book? Is your life an open book that people can read? It's your life. The Bible tells us that we are like newspapers that people read. Are you one of them? Can people read you transparently? Oh, you have some areas that people cannot read. Let us be transparent by wisdom. Let us be transparent. Like I said, Daniel humbled himself. People listen to us when we we incarnate meekness. When we become meek and humble. Jesus Christ, the, the son of the living God, the king of kings and the lord of lords, was so humble. The Bible says in Philippians 2.10 that he humbled himself. He humbled himself unto death. Philippians, the book of Philippians Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Let's look at verse number, number 10.
Let's, let's start from 8 until we can get a good example of that. Even fire. Let this mind, verse number 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in like likeness of man and being found in appearance of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. He became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. At the very time of going to the cross, he was so obedient. He became so obedient, he did not quarrel, he did not struggle, he did not ask questions, he did not murmur, he became obedient. And that's exactly what God wants you and I to be, to be obedient, to be obedient, you know, to humble. Humility is the hallmark of greatness. Humility is the hallmark of wise people. Wise people don't talk too much. Wise people don't fight. Wisdom and people of wisdom don't argue. They don't. They will not argue. And even if they will argue, they will argue wisely. Beloved, Daniel was humble. Very, very humble. People listen to us when we become meek. Daniel served and submitted to authorities unless they broke a higher law. Daniel, Daniel will submit to any authority unless that authority breaks the higher law. When they broke the higher law that no one should pray, it was only then that Daniel broke because there's only one higher law and that law comes from King Jesus. It's not man. Man cannot stop that higher law. There's a higher law. And that one, by the grace of God, we need to look at it and, and disobey. If it's coming from a higher law, it's coming against a higher law. But people will listen to us when we are humble. Friends, wherever you are, you are a leader in a corporation, in a society, in an organization, in a church. You are a leader, you need to work on your humility. By humility, you can go far. Humility showcases wisdom. Let me take, tell you this. Humility, to be humble, shows wisdom. To be humble doesn't show timidity. To be humble doesn't show weakness. To be humble shows wisdom. and shows power and greatness. Great people have always been humble. So Daniel was humble. Very, very humble, man of God. Oh, and then you need, if people are to listen to you, you need to be competent. People will listen to us because of our abilities and experience or expertise. Daniel did many things better than anyone else. He did many things better than anyone else. But we have Jesus in us. We can do all things. Eh? The Bible says we can do what? All things. For the time of Daniel, it was the Holy Spirit that made him super. It was the Holy Spirit that helped him. And that same Spirit, that same Spirit can help you and I become what God wants us to be. It is the same Spirit. It is the same Spirit. The same Spirit. That same Holy Spirit that was working in the life of Daniel is the same Holy Spirit that is working in our lives now. There's nothing, there's no difference. So if Daniel was able to do it, by the grace of God and by the Holy Spirit guidance, we will be able to do it. Shout amen. So Daniel was confident. And above all, Daniel was very, very courageous. Every wise person is courageous. You need to walk in courage to be wise. Wisdom will make you courageous. Because wisdom 
is you be courageous based on God's word. Courageous. People listen to us because we are very, very courageous. Courageous. People who are courageous, they inspire people. They encourage people. They strengthen people. So people want to listen to them. They don't want to listen to an old, weak, feeble, fearful person. Nobody wants to listen to a fearful person. You don't, you don't encourage people. You don't strengthen people. Nobody wants to listen to you. But Daniel was a very courageous person. That's the reason why initially Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they listened to Daniel. And friends, you need to be courageous. You need to be courageous. People listen to will listen to you because of your demonstration of, of being courageous. Daniel was not once puppet and showed he would die for his conviction. He was courageous. When he was to be put in the Daniel's den, he said, yes. He opened his windows when everyone was asked not to pray. He opened his windows. He did not just pray inside. He opened his windows and prayed. He was courageous and was, com was convinced of who this God is. A courageous person is always a person who walks in the knowledge of the Holy Spirit and is convinced that the Holy Spirit will help him and that is the highest level of wisdom. And today, we want to thank God for his word. And uh, this is coming from Dominion Miracle Center, where we're taking territories for Christ. This afternoon, this evening, let's do a summary of what we've learned so far. First, we were talking about how will people listen to you? How will people listen to you? By wisdom. We say that Daniel had an excellent wisdom. And by wisdom, we're talking about he built the relationship with God by which people listen. When you have a relationship with God and with people, they will listen to you. Daniel also had a wisdom of sacrifice. He sacrificed everything. He was a man of sacrifice. He put his own life aside. And that's the reason why many listened to him. He was a man who had a good character. Oh, friends. In summary, Daniel had a good character. And that's the reason why people flocked to him. He was a man of relevance. He took care of people. People's care was his care. Hallelujah. He had great insight. Insight to be able to help people. Glory to God. He was a man of genuine transparency. He was a man of genuinely transparent. You can see him throughout. He was, an, he was an open book that men read. Beloved Daniel was a man of experience. He had so much experience. Daniel had and was a man of humility. He humbled himself. That's why Many listened to him in his day. He was a man of confidence and also a man of courage. Man, people will listen to you when you have all this inbuilt, genuine factors inside of you. Many people will listen to you and will follow you. This evening, this afternoon, let us build the wisdom of God that will help us to be in a level just as Daniel, that people will listen to him. Because people need us. People need us so that we can show them the way. People need you and I to direct them. People need you and I. But if we don't have these skills in wisdom, how are we going to help them? We're going to fall and go astray this evening. May the Lord help you. May the Lord bless you as you hear his word. And beloved, 
If you're on the line and probably you don't know God, you're asking God to come into your heart. You can just say this simple prayer with me. Dear Lord, I have heard your word and I am coming home. I am tired of running around. Write my name in your book of life. I receive Jesus into my heart and I love him for loving me and I thank him for giving me another chance of coming to him. I receive him tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray this simple prayer, Jesus has come in and he will dwell with you forever and ever. Amen. And beloved, before we go, I want you to know that this program online and in church travels on wheels of finances. So we encourage you to sow your seed. Sow your seed to Dominion Miracle Center where lives are being transformed and lives are being changed for the kingdom of God. Your seed is for the kingdom. Your seed is for the growth of God's divine kingdom. And I believe that when you sow, God will increase you abundantly. So let's get together and sow unto the Lord. And uh, our email address that you can sow is hello at dominionmiraclecenter.com. You can give your offering and your seed, seed faith or faith seed to hello at dominionmiraclecenter.com. God bless you. And together, I believe we are making changes all over this world for the kingdom of God. Therefore, help the Dominion Miracle Center to make a change for Jesus, make a change in the lives of people, and bring them to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, and God bless you, and uh, we shall see you once again next week, the same time, the same hour, and together we all say, Jesus is Lord. And yes, indeed, it's Lord. And tonight, and this afternoon, based on where you are, let's receive God's divine grace. The Lord God Almighty bless you. The Lord God Almighty keep you. The Lord God Almighty cause you to know him. The Lord God Almighty fill you with his wisdom in a name which is above every name. Amen and amen. God bless you. See you next week at the same time.